Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about how inconsistent or consistent is a Chinese head. Um, so that's what we're going to find out today. And I will, I need to give a little backstory first for this. First off, I'm going to be upfront with you. AFR donated these heads to me because these are going on a dyno mule. So if you're new to my channel or you haven't watched my other videos, I'm building a 406 small block Chevy or having someone build it. And then what I'm going to do is we're going to dyno and we'll start testing individual things just on this cylinder head. There's like many, 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 many tests being done involving this head. Um, as far as porting wise, changing one thing or another. So that's the purpose for this head. But I wanted to gather as much data about the head as possible before we began. So if there was some kind of trend, it would show up in the information that was gathered. So here we are. This is kind of some of the backstory. But this is AFR's Enforcer Small Block Chevy head. It's for a small block Chevy. I think they're supposed to be 195 cc's. These are cast in China, their valve jobs done in China, but they are assembled in America at AFR. However, they have to be disassembled by me because I'm gonna put a solid roller springs on it, so I gotta change some things. However, I decided, you know what? I wanna get there as much data as possible about this, and that's what I've done. So let me tell you what's done, and then what will be in this video. I have flowed all eight ports, both intake and exhaust. Um, it's two pair of heads. I've only CC'd one head, ran out of time. So I CC'd the uh, intake ports, exhaust ports, and chambers on one complete head. And that's not all though. Besides just flowing it on the, you know, like you normally would, all eight ports, I also, on cylinder three, I flowed them in reverse. So like you could think um, when an engine's running, there's always a reversion happening. And you can reduce that, but it's always gonna happen. So on cylinder number three, I flowed in reverse. So instead of this one being air going in like it's supposed to, I actually float it out to see how bad it would be in reverse. Same thing with the exhaust port. So there's always exhaust going out, but there's always a pulse going in. That's reversion. So I measured how much actual flow it has in reverse. Did that too. I then also float them not only just on this bench, on cylinder number three, I also float it on the Superflow 750 because this one does read different. Also, this one has, this is called a swirl meter. So we can measure the amount of swirl. And all this data is going to be added up. Now, is that all I'm going to do with the heads? No. The next step after this is I've got to take them off the flow bench, put them on my mock-up block, um, bolt on the intake, drill the alignment holes, then flow the entire head again, all eight cylinders, with the intake attached and a throttle body as well to see what that actually does for flow as well. Because uh, you're seeing just the cylinder head flow right now, but the, with the intake manifold on, it could change um, dramatically. So it could make some cylinders that are the worst, the best, and vice versa. So anyway, I'm gonna do, let's just get to the data. I'm gonna show you guys this first because some people like this. This is the graph of the numbers. So, where my pointer went, there we go. So what you see here is, this. these lines right here on the bottom, these are the exhaust ports. These are all eight exhaust ports. And right here on this top part, this is the intake ports. Um, some people like to see this because this is an overlay. And what you see is, and it's not so much noticeable down here, but it definitely is up at these ranges, is that the difference in flow is can show up with each individual line. So we look, I flowed from zero all the way to one using a 10th of an inch uh, increments. So if you look really at the lower lifts, probably from one, that's where it starts obviously, two, it's about the same, and even three, it's about the same. When you start getting to four, they're starting to vary. And by four on, they really vary. Cause you can see from here to here, that cylinders are way different as far as flow wise. Now, by the way, you'll be interested to see how little difference there is as far as CCs are uh, to get the flow numbers from here to here and also. Same with the exhaust ports. They're pretty relatively close at the lower stuff, but once you get the higher lifts, they are not, as you can tell. So as you can see, they're off. They are not the same. Um, same with here. So kind of interesting. But you might be saying, well, it was maybe because one port's bigger than the other. Because really, when we think about Chinese heads, I always, because maybe I'm American, we have a little bit of exceptionalism. We like think our stuff's always better. Um, I thought, well, you got a Chinese head. It's definitely not going to be consistent. So when I go flowing them, they're going to be different, which they were. But it must be because the, they have horrible core shift and the CCs are different. So I CC'd everything. So let's, let's first look at that because that's going to show you uh, that really had nothing to do with it. 
So here we go, just run down the measurements in case you're really wondering. They advertise these heads to be 64 cc chamber. This is the angle plugged version, by the way. Um, they also advertise to be 195 cc's on the intake. So this is cylinder one. The chamber measures 66.6. This is number three, 66.2, five, 66.2, seven, 66.2. In general, that's pretty, that's really, really close as far as cc's on a chamber. Because all of them are in the 66 cc range. There's not one cc difference between the head. And you're like, no way. Yeah, that's, it. I'm 100% use the same valve or a different valve, each individual valve for each cylinder. And that's what it came up with. Now, I'll be quite honest with you. There are CNC heads right now that will not get that close. And you're like, no, CNC chambers are exactly... Yes, they might be, but if the head's put in the head, if the head is put in the machine that CNC's it just slightly wrong, it will machine one chamber deeper than the others. Or, and this happens quite a bit too, they might actually have CC, CNC'd the chambers all correctly, but then the next op might be for them to mill the head, and they've got the head sitting on the mill like a few thousands crooked, so it takes more from this side than it does from this side, and you end up with a chamber that's smaller here than here. So when I'm seeing these as 66 all the way across, I'll be honest with you, I was a little shocked. However, if you're like, there's something else though. This is not 64 cc though, that's 66. This means your compression ratio is going to be a little bit lower. This means on the 406 that we're going to build, it ends up turning out to be 11.25. So a little lower. Now let's look at the intake ports though. Uh, number one is 197. This is number three at 198.4. Number five, 197.6, and 198.6 on the uh, number seven here. So they are more of a difference. You've got 198 at the highest, the 197 at the difference. It's about two cc's. Now that's not huge. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that's horrible. You should see a big block head. If you're used to small block stuff and you know that's all you've ever seen, you would not know that a big block Chevy head has a dramatically difference because you'd have a short runner and a long runner. And their CCs are quite a bit different. Now, the cross-sectional area is actually the more important part, but that part's pretty much the same. Now, on the exhaust ports, those are different. <laughs> and for those who are in the small block Chevy world, you may not understand this. The outside ports are not the same exactly as the inside. We like to think that they are, but they're not. Usually when you have a head digitized, so you, in other words, you ported a head and you want the CNC machine to copy it, usually you have to port that exhaust and this exhaust. And I'll flip them around and do these two sides. But in other words, these are usually a little different. Not a huge, huge difference, but a little. And it shows up on the CCs though. 79 on this one. 74.3 on this one, 75 and 79, which means the outsides are exactly the same and the insides are pretty close. Anyway, that's all that. So there's, you got your CCs, that's pretty cool, right? But how's it work on flow? Well, first off, this is not the first time I float all eight um, cylinders on the head. I actually did it before on this head right here, which is the AFR 305 big block Chevy head. And you can watch a video about that. Now that head though was cast in America. It was cast by Elderbrock before you think, oh my gosh, are you saying Elderbrock makes AFR heads? No, El um, AFR doesn't have a foundry. There's only two cylinder head companies I know of that actually have foundries and that's Brodix and Profiler. So AFR had to use someone else to cast their heads and at this point when they were doing it, it was Elderbrock. So, that's American Foundry, or was when it was cast, it was in uh, California. And so we got to see all the differences there. However, the biggest part of this video is, was China that far different? I mean, you just saw the numbers. So that's kind of the point of it. So here they are. Here's all eight cylinders. I'll let you, I'll hold this for a second. I won't say much, so you can pause your screen. You can look and see how different they are. This is all eight cylinders right here. Now, as you look at them, you'll see they're relatively close, but not entirely. Um, it turns out from what I've seen, now remember, this is all eight. It looks like number three is actually probably the highest flowing one. Well, sorry, number six actually beats it at 272.4. But on the head we have right in front of us, um, that's off and CC, number three is 272. We can call that 271.6, but we'll call it 272. If we look at its size, this is number three. That's 198.4. Well, what's the worst one of just this head? Because I haven't CC'd that one yet. If we look at that, the worst one is actually number seven. If we look here, it never even gets close to 270. It's, well, it gets 270, but it's not 271. If you look down here, it's mostly 260. So it's, it's a little bit lower, I'd say. 
This is one of the lower ones. But guess how much CC difference it is? 198.6. It's actually the worst flowing one, but it's also the biggest one. It's a few C tenths of a CC larger than number three. So you would think because it's bigger, it should flow more. Doesn't want to necessarily work out that way. So that's a little interesting thing. So CC difference, not so much of a difference at all, really. Not even one CC. Flow-wise, though, it does make a bigger difference. We'll just compare the two real quick. Look at this, 186 to 186. They're close, like there. But look, number seven is 230 to a 228. So that's actually a little bit higher there. 253.9 to a 254. That's higher there. 255 to a 270 on number seven. Woo! Am I comparing the right ones? I am not. I should be on this one. Sorry, I was comparing number two. 233, 233, same. 186, 186, same. 224 to 230. Number three is actually worse at 400. 253, 253, tied there. 270 to 269. That one's actually worse by a few CFM there. But then look here. This is your peak number here. 271 to a 260. That's 11 CFM better there. So yeah, in other spots, it's 4 CFM worse. But look, 11 better there. So... It's kind of weird because they're so close as far as CCs, not even one CC difference. So chances are it's one little thing, how things are machined in here, which I'll tilt the head down so you can hopefully see this. You see how they have this machines part here? And you can definitely see a ledge on that one. Some of them have it worse. As you can tell, this one has none. This has some more. See, it's got a ledge there too. This one has hardly any. This might actually be helping the flow. Just an estimate, just a guess. But anyway, there's something for you guys to think about. You can look at the exhaust side too. They're, they're about the same. Uh, again, number seven, that's right. And it looks to be the worst one as far as exhaust flow. And number three for this head is one of the better ones. And if you look at those, 79 versus 74. This one's actually even bigger and flows worse. Something to think about. Now, if that was only a flow I'd done with you, would be like, oh, that's cool. What else did you do? I told you I'm trying to collect as much data as possible so we can see what's going on. So let's look what else I collected. This is the flow numbers from the Superflow on number three only. It takes too long to flow ahead on Superflow on the Superflow bench. It's only flowed one of them, just so I can get a, very, a little difference. So two different flow benches, you get the idea. There's that. But this one you're going to find interesting. I promise you that. If you're into the swirl, one of those swirl guys were like, ah, swirl makes a huge difference, right? Well, as soon as I can get the paper turned, let's grab both of them. Oh, this is really hard with one hand. Curses. Sorry for the delay here. There we go. Here's your swirl numbers. This is actually shocking to me. Usually on a good head, what you'll see is it'll start, this is the swirl. So here's your flow. This is cylinder three still. This is the RPMs that this thing does. Inside here, I'm gonna tell you how the swirl meter works. Inside here, there's a blade and it's fixed like this. As the air um, comes down the cylinder, it will spin the blade. The RPM is recorded here. Usually on heads, on small block Chevy heads, what you'll see is it will start off like here, about this range, 600 or so, and it will gain all the way to 3,000 or 3,500 as it goes up. So as each lift point increases, typically the swirl increases. That's not the case for this. It almost goes stagnant. That's unusual. Do I see it in other heads? On LS, like an LS3 head, what you'll see is it'll be normal, gaining, gaining to about 600. It goes stagnant, then it starts gaining. So something similar to this. But anyway, look at this. That's normal. Normal for a tenth. That's normal. That's normal. But look, it goes from a, almost a you know 1,000 RPM down to 360. So it actually slows down when it goes to 400 lift. So it's going even further at 500. And then it starts gaining a little bit of speed at 600. And then look how much it should be. So this is very interesting in the fact that if you're one of those swirl guys, this actually has very little swirl, extremely low swirl compared to um, a lot of the ported heads. So if you look at this chamber and you're like, this is a high swirl chamber. This is not. So at least not at those diff points. And it's still a good, just to give you an idea of my uh, Dragon Slayer's ported, they're about 3,500 RPM they're going to swirl. Um, this is something to think about, and we're going to be interested as the test goes on, so as we dyno more. So all numbers are going to change, we'll see if that has any effect on power as well. But I thought some of you might get a kick out of that. Now, I told you I flowed the head in reverse, so that'll be the next thing I show you. Let's see. Uh, yep. 
This is the reverse flow of the intake. So number three, this one right here, instead of having it suck in, I blew out to mimic a reversion. This is how much number three intake port flows in reverse. So it did like 270, which you just saw in regular flow. It does 254 in reverse. So it's, it flows worse in reverse, which it should. This is that exhaust port. So this is number three exhaust port. So it should be blowing out. That's normal direction, but sucking in, how's it look? It looks worse. So just something to keep in mind. So there's that. And there's one more thing I'm gonna show you and I'll let you guys get after your business. Because I had all the CC data for the head, the flow numbers for the head. I've also measured the head, which I'll show you in case you wanna see at the end. Um, besides all that, I can enter in the program here for the on the flow bench and it will estimate the horsepower and torque stuff. So I already knew what it was gonna be for cam, exact cam and all that. So if we look at it, according to this, this says on this 406, and we'll see how close it gets when we get to the dyno. This says it should make a peak total, peak torque with the cam that's in there, which is a 260, 270, 680 lift. Uh, 406, 11.2 compression ratio. Uh, 4,900, it should make 570 foot-pounds of torque. We'll see how close that, close that gets. At that point, it should make 531 horsepower. Peak horsepower, they're estimating it to come in at 6,100 RPM, relatively low, but it's saying it should make 594. So we'll see. Um, this gives you a bunch of that other information. This is what your plenum should be. This is saying what you really need for a, a port volume compared to what we have. Um, and this is the cam specs. These are actually V cam specs. So um, just something to look at to give you guys an idea. Now, if you're thinking about that's all I recorded, no, I've told you I recorded every little piece of information. These are actually the um, information about the, the valve itself that was used, which is an AFR valve. It's seats, width, margin, all that stuff. I actually weighed each one of the valves too because when I go in the dyno, if there's one that one cylinder that's more likely to have valve flow, I want to see if it has something to do with the weights of the stuff. But that wasn't all I measured. Um, let me turn the page. If you care, care, for, care any about this, you could pause this one. This are actually the measurements for the head. So yes, I did the CCs. That's the throat, 90%, bowl, 94. That's the area over the cro uh, cross section over the short side. That's over the push rod pins. That's how far the short side is of the deck. That's from the bolt hole. And that's the bowl depth. This kind of gives you a net, uh, how long the actual port is. The, this part, this part, and then the total length, which, why is it not on there? I thought I wrote it there. It is on the other sheet. Yeah, I did, right there, 5.43 long. The exhaust port's here. This is its information. It's got an 86% throat. So the first test, when I port this, the first thing I'm gonna do is port the exhaust port. I'm gonna leave that throat alone. Um, then I'm gonna open it up and see what it does. All that's there, and then I had started assembling one head and then realized I needed a disassembly because I still have to flow it with the intake on. I started recording what the valve spring pressures will be, what shims I'll use underneath each. So my Buxton allows me to measure all that so I could see which each spring is gonna be as far as pressures. I need to actually go back and look at that one. That's actually kind of low because all the others are like 268. That one spring there is 260. So I'm gonna go back and double check that. But anyway, that's all there. Hopefully you guys got something out of this video. If there's something else you'd like to see about this head, and as far as I know, there's no more information about this head than what I provided it, provided you guys here on the internet. So, anyway, thanks for watching. And uh, all I can say is the head actually is pretty consistent for being Chinese. CC is really close, and flow's not that far off either. Anyway, thanks for watching. You guys take care.